Satan's business is to destroy believers. Satan's business is to destroy people in the faith through every technique imaginable. He'll use anything. His goal is simple. His goal is this, to keep the believer from experiencing the thrill of victory. To keep the believer from experiencing the victorious life. The Bible contains one whole book, y'all, one whole book dedicated to, to explaining what the meaning of life is. You ever ask yourself that? What is the meaning of life? One whole book is dedicated, and that book is the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's go to chapter 1. You can just write down on your notes, uh, please, uh, what the meaning of life is. If you want to know the meaning of life, you, just, you can just go to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Solomon says, vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Vanity means meaningless, useless. This life is useless. This life is meaningless. You know, that's kind of a downer of how to start a book. You know, in homiletics class, they teach you how to preach. And the way how you're supposed to preach is you're supposed to get that illustration or that introduction to get the people hooked in your message and then take it from there. But here in the book of Ecclesiastes, they don't look for an illustration or something with a bang. Uh, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, it just starts out with vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Life is meaningless. And so today, I've come to tell you how we could find uh, the meaning of life. Praise the Lord. Uh, before I do, can I put this on? I know that the New England Patriots and, uh, hallelujah, the New York Giants are playing, but I'm still a Texans fan. Do you have any Texans fan? So I want to be in allegiance with my team. So even though they're not in the Super Bowl, can I preach with this hat on? Can I get an amen? amen? And so, here we go. Ecclesiastes. The Bible says, this preacher says that life is meaningless. And then uh, we go to chapter 1. Can life, the meaning of life, can it be found in wisdom? You can be the smartest person in the world, but if you don't have Jesus Christ, then the preacher says that wisdom is meaningless. Amen. Wisdom is useless. He goes on to chapter 2. Uh, can the meaning of life be found in pleasure? If I could just satisfy this flesh, I'm going to find it in pleasure through relationships or ungodly relationships. Whatever it is that I could find to satisfy this flesh, you know, this preacher, Solomon, he'd done it all. And you know what he found out? He found out that even pleasure is meaningless. Amen. Pleasure is useless. So he goes on, can I gratify this flesh with wine so that it could, that, that's uh, on the, the dome or the arena of pleasure. Maybe I can get the best of the wines. Maybe I can get the best of, of, of this, um, uh, not grape juice, I'm talking about wine. I'm talking about I'm going to drink myself to sleep every night. I'm going to party every night. I believe that meaning in life could be found. He tried it, and you know what he found out? Can meaning be found, meaning of life be found in gratifying your desires or your flesh with wine? He says, no, no. Wine is useless. It's right there. It's in the book. And then now he, he turns to accomplishments. Maybe I can get my BA. I can get my MA, my PhD, my, uh, um, my, my MD. But, but, but first, let me get my GED. Can I get an amen? And so, can I satisfy my life? Can I find the meaning of life through accomplishments? And so, there's not anyone that's smarter, more intelligent than Solomon. And so, he goes on to, to satisfy, or he's thinking that he can satisfy himself with not just wisdom, but also knowledge and accomplishments. And then, you know what he finds out? That accomplishments, they're meaningless. They're also useless. Uh, chapter 2, verse 18, can, be, can the meaning of life be found in hard work? I know what I'll do. I'll just work and work and work. I'll, I'll, I'll get myself from working from the bottom of the cellar all the way down to management office. Can meaning be found in work? 
Work can be gratifying sometimes. But if you work and work, and Solomon did it, he built the temple. He built the most beautiful temple that this world has ever seen. Guess what? Only to find 